Welcome, bienvenidos to today's core peer learning circle, part of a series about grant reporting. Um, today, we're going to talk about going beyond funder reports to communicate your results to broader audiences. And we'll speak more about this in a moment, but these peer learning circles are a little different from our usual core coffee chat format. They're more of a conversation where we can all share tips and learn from each other. I'm Nicole Lezen. I'm one of the local consultants who facilitates a countywide initiative called the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based or Core Investments, along with Nicole Young. We're your hosts today and are joined by our colleagues Jane Conklin, Stella Lauerman, who's providing simultaneous interpretation, and Gisela Carrasco providing consecutive interpretation and translating your questions and comments in the chat. And now I'll turn it over to Nicole Young who will give us a quick overview of CORE. Thanks, Nicole. So again, CORE stands for the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based Investments. And we think of it as both a funding model and a movement to achieve equitable health and well-being in Santa Cruz County using a results-based collective impact approach that's responsive to community needs. And we have a mission and a vision statement that you see here on this side that really focuses on collective action and a safe, healthy community, equitable opportunities, and where we all share responsibility for ensuring the health and well-being of all people at every stage of life. So we always like to share these as just as a reminder of what CORE is about and what brings us all together. And... These events that we host, these peer learning circles, core coffee chats, other trainings, um, are all part of our efforts to work together to create those eight interconnected core conditions for health and well-being. And so we uh, offer these learning opportunities as a way to build some shared language, develop common skills, uh, to encourage others to experiment and share lessons learned. And so these uh, peer learning circles have been a really fun kind of way to, to do that, uh, focus on a particular topic this month. So we're glad to have you all here. And I will turn it back to Nicole. Thanks, Nicole. As I mentioned earlier, these peer learning circles are a different format from our usual core coffee chats, but they're still all about learning. They're designed to be a little more informal and conversational and today our conversation um, will be centered around a theme that we can all share tips and challenges about learning from each other along the way. And today's theme is beyond grant reporting. Um, so what to do with, with all the information that you've gathered for these funder reports and get some, some more use and reach out of them. Um, this whole series, today is the last in our series uh, on this particular set of topics. Um, these are all related to this time of year when we often have um, grant reports due around the end of many fiscal years. And we hope this will be useful, not just right now for any grants, grant reporting that might be due by say tomorrow, but really any time of year, um, along with some of the other topics that we've been covering together. So some of you have been along for that whole ride and some of you are just dipping in today, but either way, welcome and we're looking forward to our conversation. So um, when you registered for today's event, you had an opportunity to pose a question to us. And so these are the questions that we gathered from the registration process. So, but if you have other questions as we're going along or you didn't have one at the time, but have one now, totally fair game to add some. Um, so the first was, how to develop and implement an effective communications plan with limited resources um, in terms of financial resources, your time, your expertise, um, how to match the, the reporting of data or statistics that you may be required to share with the funder with something that feels like more of a compelling story, um, any ideas for general skill improvement and best practices in sharing information with funders and beyond, and then, of course, anything else you want to add. So does anybody have a, a question you'd like to add at this point? Okay. Um, Nicole, yes. can you hear me? I this can, is, yeah. This is Cheryl, and I don't, I don't know if this goes, um, she, her with the Diversity Center, I don't know if this goes, 
as well with the topic, but it is future oriented. Sure. Um, I'd like to take this conversation and pair it with improvement and um, best practices. And what I mean by that is, so we have what we have right now, but I'm wanting to um, create a more professional data collection and reporting environment within our organization. And I am struggling because I feel like I can't get my hands on the best tools that create best practices. I can't identify them. And when I do, they're really expensive softwares, which is fine if that if if that's going to help us professionalize our internal processes. So again, it's 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 elements of this conversation and a little bit off. So I don't know if I if it's okay for me to have brought that question here. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Um, and I and I'm eager to hear from others if you do use software for internal tracking that then can um, can be used for uh, more broad reporting purposes and can help Cheryl out with some recommendations or things that you may have come across, please do feel free to share. And Nicole, kind of like how donor databases, mm -hmm. I can pull up a dashboard and I can see how we're doing. That's what I want to be able to do with metrics and measurements and frankly, our deliverables. And I just, I cannot find a way to do it, or at least I'm limited in my, my knowledge of how to do it without okay. creating a bunch of Google documents that I have to scramble around to try to put together. Okay. Can you say a little more about the metrics that you are tra trying to track? <clears throat> just enrollments, intake forms, um, even how many um, trainings we offer, um, what kind of events are we putting on, what kind of responses are we getting to it? Because if I could actually track that for more than just grant reporting, which is what I'm trying to do, and which is the topic of this conversation, if I could actually have a dashboard and see, I can see if something's not working well, I can see if there's a trend of improvement, I can see if we've completed something that we committed to way in advance and look at how much better we're doing. We might want to center that in future grants, that kind of thing. Absolutely. And I just, I just can't, I can't, I can't get my hands on the right tools. So, so how are you, how are you doing that now? Google sheets. <laughs> okay. And uh, I did, I did have a, a consult with um, a very major, major um, company and they're using smart sheets where this company has a philanthropic arm or a nonprofit y kind of yeah. arm. And these smart sheets are set up so that they calendar their events and that pushes out to the lead. The lead fills in and it pushes back into smart sheets and it populates. Um, which is, I, I, I have actually paid for some time with this consultant to see, is this a way we could go? Mm -hmm. um, but That's basically common. what we're doing is, you know, oh, uh, so-and-so had an event. Let's hand enter that. Do we, did we remember them all? Oh, we've got a spreadsheet for this event enrollment. We've got a spreadsheet for those trainings. We've got a spreadsheet for these types of panel speaker. I mean, I, I have, I, I, I have about 12, 13 tools or, or spreadsheets I'm using to met, to do our metrics. And it's just, it feels intolerable to me. And I'm like, is this how everyone else is doing this? Okay. Well, that does sound like um, it's ripe for some streamlining and maybe um, for generating things that are more useful with less effort. Anybody else using spreadsheets or other tools that tally kind of routine activities that you have in the, in the way that Cheryl is seeking? Or this is my experience of yeah. trying to find this information. <laughs> or maybe asking what, what, how do others track their activities or is everybody <laughs> in the same situations what Cheryl described with multiple, because that is very common, right? You, identify you need to track something and you create a spreadsheet for it and then the next thing comes up that you need no you need to track and you create another spreadsheet and but uh 
yeah, I'd be curious too, like what other systems or methods do others use to track your activities and your outcomes on a regular basis? So Susan's saying spreadsheets, more spreadsheets, Spread, spreadsheets, spreadsheets everywhere. How about within spreadsheets, are, are people using tools that help, um, you know, with, with a formula or um, some, some kind of macro that, that can uh, generate the tallies that you're looking at? Um, I have something I don't know. I don't know how helpful this will be. Um, this Annalisa from Ecology Action. Uh, we started using JotForm uh, as a way to gather some of our program data. Um, it's not something that all of our all of our audiences have um, like fully adopted yet, but we've been able to get some data back through it, and our um, we have like some really rock star IT staff who have made it so that. Uh, well, the the platform itself, this online surveying um, and like forms platform, has capabilities to create tables, and um, you can build in equations also, so that it does some of the work for um, gathering averages. I think kind of like Survey Monkey um, in that way. So we we are still though copying those things into a spreadsheet so i'm not sure you know it it, it kind of depends like how deep who's using that spreadsheet right like i think it's just a process of kind of slowly figuring out how to get everybody like all the different units and departments um like accounting and anybody who's working on programming and things like that using one system and that's kind of the tricky part because everybody needs to see information in different ways or if the spreadsheet's like really deeply rooted and that's just part of the process it's like having these whole trainings and figuring out like how to onboard everybody but um yeah i don't know if that's a possibility to use like just a pl platform that can gather all that info and it will still be like a copy paste but maybe it just won't be in a spreadsheet and then everything lives in job form too um, so it's sort of like it in drop form, you can see your form, but it also has spreadsheet capabilities within drop form. Like it's not, um, you don't have to leave drop form to see it in a spreadsheet format. Thanks, Annalisa. And Nicole's put a link to drop form in the chat. Anybody wants to do some exploring? Any other ideas to help Cheryl out? Or even things that you've thought about exploring but haven't gotten around to yet? Well, we, we may not have solved the issue for you, Cheryl, but I hope you feel less alone. <laughs> yeah, it's actually not, um, it's kind of not okay. I, there's a lot of people that are very busy here and, probably are spending too much time juggling this, this must do activity. So I'm determined to figure this out. Sorry. I'm determined to figure this out and I will bring it back to share whatever I find. Hold on. Okay. And Mike, I see your Tableau suggestion in the chat. Thank you for that. So it sounds like um, Mike is getting ready to learn more about using this through help from a, a colleague. So we might have some other ideas too coming in from that. Is anybody else using Tableau for this kind of purpose? I've usually Mike, is, is Tableau made for grant management or is it actually being utilized that way, but it's made for another process? So, so my colleague uses it um, for a program that we have at the food bank here um, called uh, Grocery Rescue Program. 
So what he needs to do is he compiles data from our participating partners, as well as our um, sort of retail partners that donate food directly to our partners. So this is the way that he's able to collect that data and then present it in, in a way that's useful for, for grants. And he does have to report it to our national uh, organization that we're part of, which is Feeding America. So okay. he's coming Thanks. over to our team. So I'll, use, I'll get to use it a little bit more. Um, Thanks, Mike. Yep. Great, thanks. Any other tools that you're using in this way that we haven't talked about yet? I just want to add to that, like spreadsheets, or at least from the from my experience, like spreadsheets are great, and, and we probably never will be able to get away from using spreadsheets. It's more it's more about like what happens on like before the spreadsheet. So I heard you mention something, Cheryl, about. Like, is there an easy form that your staff could fill out every time there's an event so that like they don't all have to go into the spreadsheet, but there's something where the, it's easy and standardized, right, to quickly pop, fill out the information that somehow that feeds into the spreadsheet. And then when you're wanting to look at data in different ways, like, you know, if you want to filter it or sort it or have it displayed in different ways, that then there's a dashboard function uh, that then because the dashboard itself, you know, it gets the information from the spreadsheet, but you need the ability to be able to look at it in any way that you want to sort it or um, filter it. And so it's kind of those at least three pieces, right, that uh, have to be figured out. And so there's different ways to do that. Google Forms, see how they're saying Google Forms does that. Um, yeah, we, we currently use Google Forms, but you have to generate a separate Google Form for each thing you're measuring. So it doesn't do the overview that I would like to see happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and then and then adding on top of there is is not only the metrics, but the whole process of managing grants from prospecting to to the metrics and the measurements and the impact. There's a bunch of steps in between there that requires significant organization. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I'll keep, I'll keep looking. I'll keep looking. I, I did. I've started to just Google. <laughs> so I'll see what I find. Yeah. And I see um, Annalisa's comment in the chat saying that's uh hundred percent sounds like what Jotform form is able to do. You can build the forms via the spreadsheet data and automate the tables and results visualization. You don't have to generate the spreadsheet separately. So, I mean, this might be a good follow-up topic, you know, uh, if, you know, if it's, a, if it's of interest doing a similar kind of peer learning circle where if any of you are willing and comfortable sharing some of the actual tools and what those <clears throat> forms and reports look like and sharing them on screen, you know, we could do one where maybe it's not recorded if you're hesitant to show, you know, some of your actual agency data, but this seems like a really valuable topic to not just talk about and 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 share out loud, but to actually see, okay, what does that look like in reality or in practice? So if that's of interest, let us know in the when we get to the end of this and fill out a, a feedback survey, because we'll put that on our list of things to return to. Yeah, great. Thanks everyone. This is exactly how we envision this kind of uh, peer learning circle working that you know, we, we don't necessarily have answers ourselves and we know they're out there and it's just creating a, a forum where we can exchange these kinds of tips and ideas, even if they're not um, fully vetted or um, or work through. So great. We'll we'll follow. We'll keep following up and let us know if you come across other examples. Um, one of the questions was about. Um, developing and implementing an effective communications plan when your resources are limited. So it's you know a slightly different angle on this, but just the idea that a, a funder report is something you have to do and going beyond that is going to take some some work and bandwidth that you may or may not have. And so um, anything to elaborate on that question? 
that was my question. And I think I often, you know, I'm juggling lots of deliverables. And by the time I'm done with that, I'm just like there isn't necessarily time to do those things. And so I will often, you know, I'll come across some interesting example and I stash it in a drive someplace and I think I'll get back to it or I'll be on a call like this one and I'll take down lots of notes about things to do or, you know, platforms to explore and they kind of get put off to the side. So I didn't know if anyone had any great strategies, you know, for doing this kind of um, work. And, you know, I think it also takes a certain kind of creativity and dedication. And I don't necessarily think of myself as like a designer or an expert, you know, in some of these communication strategies. So I'm just kind of interested in what other people do. Yeah, any any thoughts? While you're gathering your thoughts, I just wanted to call attention to part of Jane's question, which is having a communications plan in the first place. So, you know, not just waiting for these random or ad hoc opportunities or as things strike you or inspire you, but actually having something that says, okay, every quarter we're going to have a theme about our organization that we're going to try to bring home in various ways. Or um, if you have channels already, a blog post, a newsletter, a website um, beyond the donor reports, you know, what's what's the way that you organize content to flow through all of those that the funder reports might contribute to if they don't already? So, but all of that, it could be a very simple plan, um, you know, with a couple of topics and themes for the year, but, or it could be more elaborate. Here are our messengers, here are our messages, here are our themes, et cetera. Um, did, how many of you have an actual communications plan that you follow that this might fit into? Just curious. Can't see everyone, but I see at least one shaking head. <laughs> well, that might be another topic we could focus on in the future, find some examples of those and um, that aren't too elaborate that might be helpful. Honestly, Nicole, um, this is not meant to be cheeky. <clears throat> it's less, for, at least for, for me, may, maybe I'm not speaking for everyone. It's less like an example of that or how to do that. It's literally bandwidth. Like you're looking at her, you're looking at IT, you're looking at HR, you're looking at grant writing, you're looking at ED. You know, it's like, this feels like the one of the most important things. And I just literally am going to have to find a volunteer or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. so, so maybe it's, I really appreciate the questioners um, um, tad, little add on there with limited resources. I think that for me is the critical component of it because while communication seems like a luxury, it's really, it's super essential. So the rub of that is really hard. I, I hear you. And I, I, I don't think that's cheeky at all. I think it's just the reality. But the idea is that if there were some upfront investment in a plan or a, you know, I'm going to devote X number of hours to this quarterly somehow, somewhere, um, that at least that's a, a way to hold some space for something that you feel is important, even if it's not gonna necessarily happen every time or in the way that you'd like, um, or to hand that to a volunteer who has those talents and interests, another, another idea. Any other thoughts on how, how, do, you, how do you fit this in to your, your busy demanding other responsibilities? Um, I think, yeah, this is, this is a tough one. I think when I've been most successful, which is, I just kind of, it does get like, it ends up kind of becoming maybe the second or third thing that I do. But, um, when I've made the, when I've made my list of like communications templates, mm -hmm. the number one thing it actually has really helped um, smooth out the, a lot of the rest of the process um, in a particular project. So yeah, I just, I wonder if coming back to, um, yeah, just recognizing 
the the that the necessity and the importance of having a communication plan and creating something that outlines it um, is enough to prioritize it and build it into the hours, the work hours, um, mm -hmm. just right from the get go, even if it's not totally correct. Mm -hmm. um, if that might, if so that might help. Kind of having a, a place for it. Yeah. In, in the scheme of things. Yeah. It's, it's a lot easier to say than to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, but it could also be that thing where you do it once and then you kind of have that outline to use for the next year. So it's less time in theory. In theory. Yeah. And <laughs> but some of these things do get smoother, the more you do them or that you can sort of, and that, that's part of the idea of this actually is to recycle or repurpose some content that you've already taken the time and effort to develop so that you're not having to do some of these other things from scratch. So it's consistent with that idea. Well, thanks for that comment, Annalisa. We had another question about meeting or matching um, the data that you have to report um, to a funder with something that might feel more compelling and story-like. And so I wondered if the person who'd asked this question wants to elaborate or has any other thoughts about it since if you're here with us. Or is this something that others experience as a challenge? Sometimes the funders are trying to make it easier on us and just having things like small text boxes and drop down menus, but that which is great in terms of streamlining and efficiency sometimes, but it doesn't leave a lot of room for things that might feel more interesting to other audiences. Does anyone have examples or thoughts about how you might have done that, taken a, a data point, for example, from one of those spreadsheets and then live ended up with a story or a quote or a picture? We've been trying to collect some ideas too, and we wanted to invite you to add to this list. And um, Nicole, do you want to explain the Padlet that Gisela is putting in the chat? Sure, I can actually share my screen. Um, and so this is this is open. If you click on that link, um, you could actually add other things here as well if you wanted to. So, uh, we plopped in a few things just to. Uh, give, give us something to start with. Um, but thought this could be a nice place also to just share some visual examples of, so if we're thinking about again, like how do we repurpose content that maybe you created for a report? How could you use it in other ways, either by creating different data visualizations um, or case studies? You know, if you then turn either charts or stories or quotes into social media posts, that's a category there, or actually create videos out of them, or post on your websites. Um, there, and then there could be other ways too. So feel free to add either other types of examples or a whole other section if you think that we didn't capture something here. If you do want to add something to this um, page, you can, I think, double click either anywhere on the page or go to a specific section and highlight the plus symbol there. And you can, you know, if you wanna type in an explanation there, but you can either upload a file or paste in a, a web link and it'll create the post like one of these. And so I'll actually show, this is one that Jane added. It's a digital coffee table book that highlights the work of 10 grantees. And so you'll see that when you click on that, it opens up this really cool looking uh, book and you can scroll through it. And so the reason why we wanted to share this was that it, it just provides a nice example of, you, know, you could 
I imagine like take pieces of maybe a report that you've written before and just, you know, really emphasize or highlight some key points from it with a chart um, or with images or here you've got a video. And so that's just one way to think about how else might you show or share information from that you've put together from a report. Nicole shared this one also about um, becoming better ancestors. And this has like a series of lessons that each one of them again also has some case studies or videos so that's you know pretty uh both of those are pretty sophisticated <laughs> you might be thinking like yeah right i'm never gonna be able to do that um mm -hmm. and but they're very beautiful and inspiring to look at so sometimes that's just the fun part too is to just see things that give you that inspiration um i uploaded this one which is an example of a just a two-page visual summary that features some key data that is actually included in a much lengthier uh, and detailed evaluation report. And this one I just created <clears throat> in uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, created charts within PowerPoint and then saved it as a PDF. Um, but I've used this uh, like in uh, meetings with legislators where, I, where we were talking about this particular program and wanted to have a leave behind. And I knew that they weren't going to, this is actually the full, uh, evaluation report, and you can see it's got a lot of, you know, great information and also a lot of text and a lot of data to wade through. So thinking about like different audiences, um, think, you know, knowing that, okay, legislators probably aren't going to read a, a whole report like that, but if we want to leave them with something that they can remember, they can refer back to, um, you know, thinking of leave behinds like this has, has been helpful. And so let's see. And I think the other one we added here as an example, this is Cradle to Careers website, Cradle to Careers Santa Cruz County. Uh, they have a results page. So it's an example of, you know, if you have a website, are there, you know, a few data points from your um, programs, you know, things that you have already compiled and, and reported on that you then think, oh, that would be a good thing to highlight on our website. And maybe it's just one. Maybe, it's, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of starting small. <laughs> even if it's just one thing and then you build from there. And so this is just an example of how one um, organization has done that on their website. Let me just see, um, is there any questions about the Padlet or, or if you're wanting to upload something, anybody has questions about how to do that? Because we'd love to see some other examples show up on here as well. And this isn't your last chance if you'd like to keep adding things to it as you come across them. You can make this a resource. I'm curious if anyone uses uh, or shares data or results from your reports on, on social media. Has anyone found a really easy, engaging way to do that. That's on my list of things to do, because I feel like, we, uh, especially with that program, which is showing Triple P, there's so much good data. And then it's kind of one of those things that once the report's done, we're like, okay, phew. Back back to business, right? And then forget like there's so many, you know, kind of nuggets of good information that we could be uh, sharing on on our social media channels. True. And and I, I know sometimes it feels like um, infographics, you know, those things you kind of scroll through with icons and data points feel a little overused sometimes, but I think they really are effective for this purpose of just, you know, here are three or four things that we really want you to know that we've done or that are going on. Um, thanks, Christine, for your comment. Not yet, but would love to start next fiscal year. It's right around the corner. And um, Annalisa is saying that um, sometimes the marketing team will share a percentage statistic and they have a folder of photos. That's great that you can choose from. It's that just really basic organization for you know, not having to scramble for things like photos um, can be really great too. 
Thanks for those comments. Any other ideas about transforming some of these things into other formats or mat matching stories to data points? I think we started out um, generally talking about our last question um, when Cheryl asked us about best practices and just some of the tools. But are there any other ways that you can think of that you'd like to share, um, either that you're doing now or are exploring or thinking about exploring in the future related to improving skills in, in all of these ways? Um, or any best practices that your organization follows that you'd like to share with everybody? Maybe we're having a, a late afternoon, <laughs> end of the week, quiet slump here. Uh, thanks, Mary Bell. You're you're exploring Canva. I've done a little dabbling in that too. How how are you finding it? Hello, my name is Maribel. Um, I love Canva, actually. I've used the um, several different, let me see if I could share. You just turned on screen sharing. So yeah, if you want to show us what you got, we'd love to see it. Did I do it right? Not seeing it yet. You should have a green share screen icon lit up. And then it, when, if you click on that, it'll let you pick a, a window on your screen so you don't have to highlight everything, just what, something you've got open. Screen share. Or at least on my, maybe others are different. On my screen controls, it's green. Okay. Can I see something? It says you've started, yeah, we can see, um, yeah, your Canva um, page account. So it's got- Okay, good. Um, I don't work on, sorry. sorry, I was just gonna say, I don't work with grant reporting, but I do use it for other, other tools like um, making org charts, and then I've done like gift wrap for, for um, events so I've used it for that and you could uh, also do like a GIF kind of thing. Uh-huh. I don't know if I could play. Yeah that looks nice. And so you start with a template? Like add little QR codes. Uh -huh. Yes you could choose several different templates. And then change See. the colors and the fonts as you like? Yes. Great. Yeah, that's a big head start to yeah, have so I, I, already I, mapped out. Yeah, so Good. I just use that for my visuals. Thanks, Mary Bell. Mm -hmm. are, are other people using Canva in those ways? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a, a great um, shortcut for, and they really have everything on there. <laughs> um, flyers, brochures, invitations, as you saw, certificates, all kinds of stuff, kind of fun to, fun to explore. Heather's saying yes. Um, Mike, I was getting ready to repeat this question. Um, I was halfway through typing it, but the question was just what other um, skills or tools people are using, um, any best practices that you'd like to share that are either already part of your organization or something that you're contemplating or exploring, but may not be using yet. And so Susan's already using Canva for certificates and is thinking this might be a good idea for other kinds of information, absolutely. Any other skills or best practices that, that help you turn information you've already collected into something that you can use in other ways? I 
Nicole mentioned using PowerPoint for something other than slides. Um, I just want to second that. It is really handy for just when you're moving things around, images and little blocks of text, and um, you can just turn the layout to be an eight and a half by 11 portrait or landscape sheet and use it just like a regular piece of paper. It doesn't have to be just for slide decks. Um, and that also has all those chart functions baked into it, if you're comfortable with those, or including org charts. It's another option. And I've played a little bit with using, um, oh, thanks, Annalisa. Yeah, you're doing that too, PowerPoint for flyers. I've played around a little bit with using um, something called beautiful.ai, which tries to um, make your PowerPoints much more designed. <laughs> um, it takes a little bit of playing around, but it, they have some, they have a really, really great um, stock photo library and they have some pre-packaged designs that look really good if you have kind of the patience to sort through some of them and, and use them. But um, that's on my to-do list to go back and get better at using all of that. But again, you know, anything that you can do a nice slide in, you can do a nice report in as well without having to be a, a graphic designer. It's always nice to have graphic designers around though, either in your colleague set or your friend set or both. Any other tools or practices anybody wants to share? Okay, let me return to our slides and go over some of the tips that we've talked about a bit today. Okay. So the first thing is to really think about who those other audiences are. So we might wanna ask, for example, are there uh, members of the board who would benefit from this information as we, mentioned earlier, is there already an existing newsletter? Um, the, whatever ways you communicate already with clients or donors or partners through traditional media or um, social media, whatever's already in place or whoever you already know you need to reach out to, it might be nice to just have uh, uh, some thought to what else they might want to know from your funder reports if you're not already doing that. And then just the habit of when you're doing your funder, your grant reports, um, thinking about not just, okay, it's the deadline, I've got to hit send and get this done, but what's one or two points that I might want to share with these other audiences and just getting in the habit of pulling those out as you do those reports. Going beyond these with some sort of story, a case study, um, an infographic, so not just the point, but how you're going to get it across. And then just more intentional um, sharing of all of these things on, on social media and newsletters and websites. Um, ideally, during calmer times, not when something is immediately due that afternoon or that week. Um, if your funder is not already giving you feedback on your reports, that might be another way to just see what landed with them and what and whether they are sharing the information that you're sending them with others. So for example, the example on the Padlet about the, the coffee table, the digital coffee table book that was highlighting a number of different uh, multi-sector collaboratives or coalitions. If you were one of those and you were highlighted in somebody else's report and compilation, um, funders do like to highlight where their investments have gone and what's happening to them. If you happen to be in your funder's newsletter or website or blog post, that's a nice thing to share and it's already done. So just be alert for those kinds of things. And then just in general, um, the, the, we talked about this in our very first peer learning circle about humble bragging. So there might be some things that you're required to report on, but there might be others that just because they haven't asked, asked you for that information doesn't mean you can't 
report on it and share it. So maybe you have learned something along the way. Maybe you have a new evaluation question that's come up as you dig into your um, reporting. Maybe you've developed a new partnership as part of this work and, um, and overcome some challenge. So whatever it is, um, even if it's not formally part of your um, grant report, first of all, if there's room, there's nothing that says you can't include it in a grant report, but also those might be particularly good fodder for um, sharing more broadly with these other audiences. So Jane, Nicole, anyone else, any other tips that you wanna share that we haven't covered already? You know, Nicole, one thing I would add is you were talking about sharing information with broader audiences, particularly if it is something from a grant report, is sometimes, you know, it, it's always a good idea if someone is funding something to kind of reference that if you can. And funders love to hear about that. I'm doing some grants administration with a project, another project right now. And they actually, one of the things they review those reports for is any social media mentions of their programs because they also need, they have stakeholders. They're trying to demonstrate their impact too. So that's always a nice thing to mention them. And if you do mention them to let them know about it. Um, what a good reminder. Yeah. Everybody um, who is on, on at all points along this work, um, the, the donors, the funders, the, um, the grantees, and all of their networks um, would all be interested in and like to know that, that this work is being supported in these ways. So easy to forget that. Other tips? Or resources? Oops. Went too fast, sorry. Well, this is um, the last in our series of these peer learning circles. And we hope that you've gotten some good ideas or at least some affirmation for how hard this is, but um, also some inspiration to do, do some of these, pursue some of these ideas. Um, we welcome any topic ideas. I think we've come up with some today from the conversation. Um, anything else that you think we could explore in this or other formats in the future, we are always eager to hear that. And we'll keep everyone posted as we come up with some more events for um, the months to come. So we're still working on the lineup for the summer, but we will share that with you. Um, so stay tuned for that. And thanks so much for for joining today and for participating. Um, and please keep adding ideas to the Padlet as you come across them, but also do let us know your feedback about the, today's um, session, because we really, part of the reason we tried different things and tried different formats is in response to feedback. So we're eager to hear what you thought of this. And um, anything to add, Nicole or Jane? Can we let everybody go? Oh, thanks for a great discussion and those of you that shared questions and uh, resources. Yeah, we look forward to seeing your, um, your examples of all this in the future. And thanks Stella and Gisela for the interpretation and translation. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>